Good, thanks. How are you? It's good to be back in the office, isn't it? Tip for everyone, when you put, let's see, I know we're gonna be talking a lot because I've got a great guest here, a return guest, but tip for everyone, when you put your clothes in the washing machine, make sure you don't put bleach in it. <laughs> Just for a simple reason, because maybe it bleaches some of the clothes that you weren't supposed to bleach. Anyway, it's good to be back in the studio, what you all paid for, of course, that is why you're here. Um, I've got a great guest here, but before we do all that, we need to have a look at what the weather is doing. The weather is uh, 16 degrees. Today is Wednesday, the 5th of October. It is mostly cloudy. Petrol hovering around the $1.89.9. I'm not too sure if the excise has kicked in just yet, but I'm sure it will get there. As you know, I was driving in the last few days heading up to Cairns, and petrol uh, or diesel um, fluctuated anywhere between $2.08 to $2.35 per every litre that you sniff. So we will be seeing that. Um, firstly, the great old man himself. Cheers, Rudy. Cheers. It's been a long time. Your birthday is coming up in less than, oh, what's the date today? The 5th. Hey? Less than a week in six days. But I will be away. I will be in Emerald. I need to just get into this. I just do. G'day, Gene. How you going? G'day. How are you? It's good, good to, to see you again. again. Well, we said that at the same time. Know, do we do a snap, snap, we're, snap? We're on the same plane. How good I, was I that? think it could be. The yeah. headline that I've got here today, yes. and I know last time we ran out of time, and I wanted to, I wanted to get you back because there's so much to talk about. But the headline that I have here is all about the driver training, mm -hmm. driver behaviour, the lack of driver behaviour. And of course, the, the headline that I had was the Buxton crash that was south of uh, Sydney or south of Picton, where five teenagers were killed. Um, the driver himself had lived. And obviously, I'm thinking that car was only made for four people, and yet six people were in that vehicle. We will be talking about that. But apart from that, before we get into all this, how have you been? Been fantastic. Bullshit. And I've finally worked out. Oh, true. Go and on. I've finally worked out how to get everywhere on time in Queensland. You leave earlier? The day early. A day earlier. <laughs> yeah, you go the day before. The... Yeah, I think that's oh, I pulled it off this morning. It was quite good. We have to sometimes. I think sometimes what we do is that we say, I want to get from point A to point B because you were late getting here today. I thought, oh, is he coming? Yeah, no, was I, was, he coming? I was on a mission. You were on a mission. Yeah, yeah. I was using your WhatsApp with Coralie. Is that her name or Laura? Um um uh uh Laura. Yeah, it's Laura Lee. What's Keira, her name? Keira Lee. Keira Lee, yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's hilarious, but she's so faint, you you struggle to hear her. I know. So you're driving down the road and comes up, and you go, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> don't know what she's talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's quite quite challenging. It so. is quite challenging, mm. but you know why we're here? Yes, we're here because obviously not only is it waffles and whiskey and good day everyone, how you all doing? But you want to know is who is first. <laughs> G'day, Wiley, how are you going? Uh, Antithalian. I think I know what this word means. I'm guessing, but I think Antithalian. Yeah, I've got no idea. Got no idea? It's Break it off, down. It's not off Masters of the Universe. No, 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 I don't know. I don't no. know. But I think this show today might be Antithalian. Okay, bit off beat, very direct. That's quite relevant to what's happening in society. Maybe no fun. No, we're plenty of fun. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, maybe... we're, we're lots of fun. And we haven't I'm even started on the first I'm pretty sure maybe it's void of having some, some humour or some fun or some uh, gaiety. I don't know. I think that I think it is. I think it's an old word. It's an old English word. Well, if we just need a bit of gaiety, we just need an ice cream. Then we can both have a gay time. <laughs> yes. no, don't no. do that. Don't push those <laughs> buttons. I see what you did there, though. That's uh, very clever. All right, so... Uh, I want to get into, I want to push this story up here. Let me just see. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a look at this. this. This is the Buxton car crash. Five teenagers from Picton High School killed in a horrific crash southwest of Sydney. Police say that it's fortunate that five teens actually survived the horror crash just one week after a Buxton tragedy. So this is another one. I was going to say happened. this has happened a few times. This has happened a few times. And mm -hmm. then there was one, like I think 2012, 2013, where a car veered off the M1 near Coomera and careered into a back of a vehicle and killed the occupants of the the, uh, the vehicle that was sitting in front. So it was a lot, and it's again teenager related. And so this is the crash here. It's, so, it's not just teenager related. 
if you look at all the roadworks, you've got those trucks with their huge booms, their collapsible yep. barriers on the back. Yep. It's because people run into the back of things parked on the side of the motorway every day, all the time. This is not a teenager's specific problem. Yep. It's a fundamental flaw in how we're approaching driver training and, and managing drivers on the road. I can agree with you in that, but I think it doesn't it start off with young age? Like I think it starts off with teenage driver behaviour and then of course that driver behaviour then extends to, you know, our age group. So, you know, a, a barrier being in the way shouldn't be something that is a surprise to us. Uh, it depends on how you define driver behaviour and this is quite interesting. So we pursue or perceive driver behaviour to be how we choose to act and behave. You know, we can be nice and placid. We could be laughing. We could be angry. Mm. Um, there's, for instance, there's a lot of anger out on the road at present. You've only got to be a quarter of a second off getting onto the throttle when the light turns green and everyone's yeah. honking their horn and getting upset. Yeah. And the irony of it is the cars are still parked the other side of the intersection. You, you can't go anywhere. So... Just move your mic a little bit. That's it. Perfect. Oh, there you yeah. go. Just no can't worries. see. Just can't see your pretty face. That's all. <laughs> Got a face only a mother could love. What are you talking about? Yeah. But what really triggers and drives the behaviour we're talking about is the information that they have access to. Hmm. So, every, last time what we did was we spoke about how our natural process for managing threats and hazard information is a direct conflict with the environment that we create because we introduce speed hmm. and our brain can't process speed. Now, when you're teaching performance and race driving you actually flip this and use it to your advantage so you stall the speed and you buy the time and time's a very precious commodity okay so that's what we do with our young drivers is we use that same process stall the speed buy time then teach them how to see what it is that they're looking at but what's driving the driver behavior is how our body responds responds to apprehension stress anxiety all those sort of things so the even the tension in your hands, and this is why what they call postural stability is so important. The tension in your hands creates adrenaline, and adrenaline's a fail-safe mechanism, fight or flight. The tension creates the adrenaline. The adrenaline takes your big picture peripheral vision down to a compromised window of tunnel and closed vision. And that is what they see. Now, what's happening is they physically can't see that, so they only make decisions on this. The next thing that happens that people don't stop to think about is it's like a funnel, a vortex that you would see on some sci-fi movie. You're trying to accelerate that window of information that's that big through that portal. Mm. Then the brain gets selective. They call it circadic masking. There's so much going on, it goes not relevant, not relevant, not relevant. Oh, look at that, not relevant. Oh, I can see that. So their behavior is dictated by what they've actually seen. And when you understand that and you look at the things that happen all day, every day on the road, that's why we've got bad drivers or what we perceive as bad drivers. And that's why we call it bad behavior. But it's actually not. They're making a conscious decision based on the one piece of information that they did see that was completely irrelevant to what was really happening. That's your driver behavior. Can I put a comment up here just for a second? Because I look... We've got so much to unpack here today that it's just, uh, I don't know where we're going to start. But Linda Hunter says, no passengers for provisional drivers is a great initiative. If you had a cold and your nose was running and it was hanging all the way down here, would wiping the nose fix a cold? No, because it would just keep doing that, wouldn't it? Hmm. Same thing with drivers. By taking them out, all you're doing is putting four more people on the road that you still didn't teach them the necessary skills in driving, which means you're compounding your problem. You're not actually fixing it. So it's what I'd call a Band-Aid. Mm. That sounds like it's got a great concept, but it's not actually fixing the symptoms. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, like in, in response to what Linda's saying, I wouldn't say so much that you would just exclude all the passengers, but could you then say... Let's just have a passenger with the one driver, like the driver and the one passenger. I think what happens is when you see that those teenagers, you know, in that last, well, just the crash that they're all talking about in Buxton, is that there must have been some egging on. So there's a 14-year-old in there, like three girls, two guys, 14-year-old, 16-year-old. Um, the driver wasn't under the influence of alcohol. The driver wasn't speeding, apparently, but the driver did complain that there was some mechanical failures in his steering wheel. 
do you think there might have been a bit of egging on from the passengers going, go a little bit faster, take some risks? You know, because there's that... I know people in their 60s that do that. Yeah. It, it's human behaviour. We, we create environments that are full of laughter and a little bit risk and some fun. We, mm. It doesn't matter who you are or where you do, but the fact that we haven't taught them this essential life skill is only compounding the risks that we're exposing them to. We did a project... Many, many years ago, it was back in 04, 05 with 60 Minutes when drive cameras, they were invented by a guy from Mullumbimby that went to Silicon Valley for funding and became quite big. That spawned the entire industry. So 60 Minutes wanted to run a story basically to set up young people using the cameras. And we, we found it damn near impossible to re recruit people for it because they said, you're going to destroy our lives with this. This has got nothing to do with good driving. This has got everything to do with sensational TV. They were switched onto it back then anyway we managed to find 50 students we split them into uh, control non-control groups so the control groups we could talk to and coach based on the information we got the non-control groups we weren't allowed to say or intervene in any way universally what we learned was they were more responsible with their peers in the car than on their own 90 percent of the triggers came when they were on their own sorry say, say it again you said they were more, more responsible, responsible when their peers were in the car and they were on their own. Mm -hmm. So me being me, I'm quite curious on this and I want to unpack it. Why? And what they came back was they took the fact that it was their friends' lives seriously and personally. Mm. And they basically changed their behaviour. They deliberately drove slower. They deliberately increased their safety margins because it was their friends. And they took ownership of that. So what did we do? We introduced rules that meant they couldn't go out with their friends and everybody had to go on their own way. Well, what happens when they can now get to a party? Because we all still love going to parties. I mean, I'm 50 and I still go out to parties, right? What happens when they can get to the party, but then they've got no mechanism to get home? Are they going to follow the rules or are they going to do what human nature is and be creative so they can still get home and not get caught? We actually created a bigger problem trying to fix a fairly simple problem. Hmm. It was really, really interesting. There was one camera trigger, that car load full of boys, there was five of them in the car, and all of a sudden they're cheering and they're clapping and, and it's on for young. And I turned to the driver and I said, how did this happen? There, you weren't doing anything with the car. I could tell everything the car was doing by the various trigger sensors in the camera. You weren't driving too fast. You weren't cornering. You weren't braking. You were driving down the straight road. Why'd the camera go off? And he said, maxi taxi full of girls and they all took their breasts out so we just had to try and get oh, you right, some footage right, right. and that was why it went off you you can't police the entertainment of life out of life mm. but all it does as i said it's all symptoms and there's a a lot of triggers to the symptoms it brings them to the surface and occasionally it bites us on the backside and unfortunately that's what's happened here it, there's nothing to suggest he was a bad kid he was a typical Trady type kid from a typical trady type town mm. out there doing what young people do. And he's paid for it with the rest of his life. Like there's no one that gets out of this for free. Yeah. Um, his mechanical thing, I've actually experienced that in another car. I was asked to look at a car for a friend of mine and he'd been the multiple mechanics. Nobody could find out what it was. I drove the thing for nearly half an hour and it was when I gave up trying to make it create the symptom he was talking about. And it was simply as turning back onto the motorway to take the quickest way back to his place. Mm. It set up an oscillation in the front so bad it scared me. I thought we were going to bin the thing at 60 kilometres an hour. And because of my level of training and skill, I knew just to come right off everything, come off the throttle, come off the steering, don't touch anything, <coughs> let the thing eventually calm down. And when it calms down, get off the side of the road and go through it. And we couldn't find it. We could not find the problem. But you could create it. So eventually it ended up being what they call a radius rod bush that basically ties the front suspension to the chassis so the front can articulate around and that was the problem with it. So mate, I wanna see this I wanna see this picture again. I think it's the second one back, that one here. How does how does that happen? Like how how did that happen? Like I know that there's gonna be an investigation, there's probably has been an investigation done, but it's a it's a it's probably a dual carriageway, isn't it? Like it's a, a No, it's a typical country. Lane picked, Road that's yeah. about one and a half vehicles wide. Look at the police vehicle. There's yeah. 
Not enough room either side of that. And if two cars to, with a pass, they'd be door handle to door handle. It's as about as unsafe as you could engineer an environment. You've got yeah. trees right on the side of the road. And your next question would be, how many people have actually crashed into those trees? We see it all the time with mm. flowers and wreaths mm. and that sort of stuff yeah, on the yeah. side of the road. We put telegraph poles there. It's what's, why, a tele, what's a telegraph pole? A telegraph pole? You're, how old are you, mate? Well, They're called power poles now. When, when, when I grew up, <laughs> our phone number was 31 and we oh, had to course. wind the handle to pick it up and okay, go, hello. Okay. All right. Sorry, we jest. <laughs> but no, when you see that, you're right. Okay. But that's not the fault of the tree. That's no. the fault of the driver. Yeah, but... Everything in human behavior. We look, make... at the, look at the state of this car. That's the next one that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he it's... didn't have a license. Yes. He was underaged. Yeah. They were all... And, and this is another part. It, interestingly, I was coming home the other night and they were doing this talk back on radio on why today's youths are so out of control. Mm. And this bloke phoned up. Military guy spent 20 or 30 years in the military, so you can imagine what it'd be like at home, X, Y, Z. And he said, problem started about four years ago when my kids started telling me what he could do and what I couldn't do. Mm. And they got power out of the fact that there was nothing anyone could do to them. So they were always pushing the boundaries. Now, you look at animals, for example. Animals will do the same thing. Dogs will do the same thing. It's always the parent dog that's nipping.